You are now listening to The Perfect Prana with Kaya Ann. This is The Perfect Prana, and I'm your host, Kaya Ann. So thank you for coming to my show all about yoga, all about my flow. Oh my God, that rhymed. Um, <laughs> I love yoga, and that's why I'm doing the show about it. To kick everything off, I invite everybody to gather all around. If you're in your, your car, you're just at home, you're chilling, you're on your way to class, you're on your way to work. I mean, this is airing Saturday and Sunday, so I don't know where you could be. You could be coming from church, going to church. You could be, you know, at home, hungover. You could, like, I just don't know. There's so many scenarios that people go through on Saturday and Sunday. Some people go to work, some people just sleep, you know, hopefully you're not sleep and you're up listening to my show that's the hope though you could do whatever you want but i wanted to invite everybody to find comfort unclench your jaw maybe roll your shoulders up and back open up your chest take a few deep breaths in through your nose out through your nose in through your nose out through your mouth Let each thought pass to the past. Let each thought pass that's about the future. Let every thought pass and just focus on the moment. Focus on your breath. Focus on where you are right now, wherever wherever you are. Just focus on that. What is here right in front of me? What is real? I am currently in the studio recording for this show next to a window with a very loud train. (laughs) That's where I met. And I wouldn't change a thing, loud train and all. The moment is perfect right now in life. Prana translates to breath, the breath of life, where we get our life from, our life source from is that breath. And It's perfect. The moment is perfect. Therefore, this is the perfect prana. I'll be starting off each episode with yoga heels. I have so many friends, so many people that I've crossed paths with from doing yoga. My first episode, I'm bringing in Tina. I met her at Yoga View, the studio where I did my 200 hour training and she works there and she's done the training too. She is a yoga instructor as well, but she's just so sweet and bubbly and I decided why not bring Tina on? But she was so helpful when it came to my training. Like as soon as I came into Yoga View, she lended me her books for the training so I didn't have to buy them and I'm forever grateful for her. She is also a Columbia student. Shout out to her. This is is her first year here. I'm here with Tina Tan. (laughs) Cool. See, when I introduced you in my podcast, I was like, does she want her full name? Why not? I feel like it flows off the tongue. Everyone says that. The alliteration. You have a pretty good radio name, to be honest. Reporting live from the radio station, Tina Tan and Kaya Logan. Sometimes I'm like, should I say my full name? Oh, oops. (laughs) No. (laughs) Sorry, I just did that for you. (laughs) Yeah, I have nothing to hide. Like, what if people know my full name? So what? What are you going to do? Google it? (laughs) Right. Take my student loans. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay. So now it's time. I want to know why you practice yoga. First, Tina, Mm -hmm. tell me when you started practicing, why you started practicing, and why do you still practice yoga? Ah, lovely. I, my first yoga class was actually with my mom when I was nine years old. And the only thing I could actually tell you about it is I remember lying down And there was just this blue aura. I don't know if it was like the light. I don't remember much of it. Um, 
But that was my first experience of yoga. And then in high school, do you ever, have you ever heard of After School Matters? No. Okay. So it's this fun collaboration with CPS schools, Chicago Public Schools, and a program or company called After School Matters, where a bunch of different opportunities are offered. So like you could do photography, you could build your skills in painting or in script writing. And the one I chose was yoga teacher in training. And they actually pay you to just do it after school. So it was like my little first job in high school. But anyway, after school matters, yoga teacher in training, we basically learned how to sequence yoga poses, how to observe the body, and how to just teach others and give general cues. So we just did that with other high schoolers. And I continued that for a year and a half in high school. Went to college. I was just practicing on my own, following some YouTube videos. But I was like, I really want to get my yoga teacher certification. So I did that. And so now I'm still practicing yoga. I did that two years ago. No, a year ago, sorry, a year and a half ago. And I now practice yoga for so many reasons. I think a huge part of it is that it connects me to my faith and my spirituality. Um, It's something that I've had conversations with in my old church, but it connects me to spirit ultimately. It connects me to God. It allows me to tune into this beautifully crafted and intentionally designed body um, and just to take care of it, but ultimately to like convene with God and also just for play. I love it as a way of exploring different sensations in my body and so much, so many yoga poses are like, animal poses so it's like okay when we were kids we would like imitate what a cow sounds like or like how a chicken walks and so doing that in yoga is is a huge part of my inner child and allowing my inner child to come out and play sorry that was a lot (laughs) no that was perfect (laughs) that was perfect prana Uh, (laughs) that was exactly what i needed make it leads you to a better life it makes you more connected to whichever higher power you're um, connecting with and especially to your own self i feel like there's such divinity in our own bodies and our own beings (laughs) i i said that a couple times within this podcast and i'm not scared to say it again i love it too (laughs) Something that I have been so terrible at all my life is like commitment and consistency. But the two things that I have always been consistent with is being in relationship with God and yoga. Those are the only two things in my life that I'm like, I don't want to not have this in my life. I need it always. I completely understand. I'm like, it's become a personality trait at this point. Retweet, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I definitely see yoga as it's a spiritual practice. And I mean, that's how I, I view movement in general is to be like, it can be very spiritual if you're having that awareness. Mm. And like you said, having a full body experience and really experience every sense that you have syncing your movement with your breath it's like wow (laughs) (laughs) yes the mind body connection y'all it's beautiful even like walking here from my previous class I was just like wow the connection of my feet to the ground that's yoga too just the awareness and the unity of everything connect interconnectedness as you once brought up earlier yeah I feel like anybody that I bring on the show <laughs> and practices yoga, it's like in the, and they're really serious about their practice. 
everybody's going to have a different background story, Mm -hmm. but kind of like the same destination. Because even I recorded, like before this interview, Mm -hmm. why I personally practice yoga. And it's like, there's so many things that we said that like we have in common between of just the spiritual reasons. And I'm like, man, I feel like everybody is just led down that path that gets into <laughs> yoga. <laughs> that is so beautiful. So like, beautiful. You know, it started different, but we all ended up in the same place. <laughs> yeah, we all found it. So, And it's leading us to something so much greater than ourselves. Well, that's, and to ourselves. It really brings us back home to ourselves. Tina, where can we find you? You can find me in a few places. (laughs) So I, oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. What do you mean by where, like, like on social media, in yoga, in life? Both. Okay. All of the above. above. So my kind of bloggy Instagram is Tina Carmentan. So you can find me there. And then I have a website on there that shares where I'm teaching yoga. So you can find me there or at Yoga View. Love. Yoga View Chicago. (laughs) Shout out to them, seriously. Yeah, that's a sanctuary and it has bridged so many beautiful connections in my life. (laughs) It's like a meeting place. Thank you, Tina, for coming on to my show. Can we take a deep breath together? So this is silly. I end each of my emails with. A deep inhale and a deep exhale, comma, Tina Tan. Okay. So I feel like I need to do that here. Especially perfect prana. Let's, you guide it. You lead okay, the way. let's start by exhaling all the air out and a full breath in through the nose. Hold the air at the top and slow, deep exhale through the nose. <laughs> seriously amazing namaste namaste thank you kaya i'll talk a little bit about why i started doing yoga i started when i was very young actually shout out to my dad um he put me in classes here and there but i've you know wasn't like too interested or in it or anything honestly i wasn't too interested in health and nutrition and fitness or anything like that at all for most of a majority of my life I struggled so much with my weight I struggled with my health I've had so many issues when it comes to my self-image my self-esteem you know all the anxiety all the depression all the this all the that eventually something clicked something changed and I decided to move move intentionally and to be more active and to to enjoy it so I eventually found refuge in movement and first it started with biking then I went to running then I went to the gym and then um, after dealing with injuries I eventually went to yoga because I was like you know I can't go to the gym I can't run right now this hurts that hurts what can I do I could always do yoga there was nothing ever stopping me from doing yoga I feel like yoga is accessible for all everybody can do yoga so it's just one of those exercises one of those movements that's truly healing and you know there's always something that you can do And it is something that I could do every day. And I mean, I do yoga every day. I always, always do something. Something is always better than nothing. What drew me to it, to just keep up my practice, just the fact that I could do it every day. I love other forms of working out. I love running. I love being on my bike. I love I even like swimming. I, I love I love going to the gym, but I just cannot physically do those things every day. Whether it's a weather condition that is not ideal or the toll that some of these things could take on my body. I you know, I don't know about you, but I can't go swimming every day just because of how annoying that would be. 
far as chlorine water and stuff like that you know what I'm saying all of these other exercises I can't do every day but yoga I could do every day I can't even go on a walk every day let it get zero degrees outside I can't do that but you know as long as I have my body and I'm breathing I can do yoga it's it's that simple I could touch my toes I can just fold forward and touch my toes I can I can reach my hands into the sky I can roll my shoulders up and back and you know there's so many things I can twist from side to side I can bend laterally there's so many things that I could do anywhere with just having my body and I I think it's just so important there's a lot that falls under the umbrella of yoga in my opinion it's not just a set like oh you're doing vinyasa you're going through these movements you're going from this um this high lunge to this warrior you're going like you know that's yoga but there's a lot of things that yoga encompasses it it's just like so broad yoga translates to to yoke to bring together the mind, the body, the spirit, you know, the soul, to bring it all together. And I truly feel that yoga does that because it's intentional breath and intentional movement and it's a full body experience. It's the awareness that it brings me crazy I also practice yoga because I want to be able to do cool things (laughs) and that's on having an ego even just do basic movements to even just do the most basic things and um, experience my body to the fullest that's why I do yoga I do yoga for my sanity you know I just move in general for my sanity I always have to do some type of exercising because I'm living and I want to keep living and movement is a requirement from life hashtag that's on biology but yeah that's why I practice yoga I practice yoga because I want to stay mobile. I just really value my life and I just want to live the best life possible. Fully experiencing my body is going to help me live the best life possible. If I make sure to intentionally move my body and make sure all the all the parts are functioning (laughs) then I think I have a pretty good chance at this this life thing and um, life is beautiful all the all the moments all the crazy chaotic moments all the ups all the downs um, it's truly an experience that I can't even describe but it's just it's beautiful sometimes I just want to (laughs) cry and that's on being poetic (laughs) looked up some yoga news and this was a headline it literally tickled my pickle so I'm glad that I can have this on my first show but yoga news (laughs) witnesses called in a ritual mass murder it was actually a yoga class so basically (laughs) somebody walked by a yoga studio and they saw a bunch of people in this like deep meditative state they called the police but turned out these people were just doing shavasana in a yoga class which shavasana does translate to corpse pose (laughs) but that's just that's like so embarrassing actually (laughs) If I called in and like turned out it was just like a a yoga class, like, okay, 
Yeah, I wonder if the person that reported that they had saw a mass killing, if they got in trouble for that. (laughs) I mean, I hope not. I guess it was like a, a genuine mistake, but... Normally, when it comes to situations in public, like, I more so mind my business and I don't call. Like, I don't know. (laughs) You know, I used to watch uh, that one show, like, What Would You Do? And they would hire actors to play out these uh, crazy scenarios to see, like, what would you do if you saw this person in the street screaming or doing like or what would you do if this person couldn't do like it it would be all these like crazy scenarios and if I'm being honest like I don't know what I would do I I tend to mind my business in public and I'm like oh I'm not I don't see it I don't know and that's how most people are which I don't blame people for being like that because it's like I don't know (laughs) I don't know but there is always those few people that if if they see something in public they're going to interfere they're gonna call the police they're gonna do this they're gonna do that and rightfully so sometimes it gives Karen but sometimes it's really necessary like if somebody's really getting kidnapped you could save a life by speaking up so listening to that intuition is important knowing hey something's not right here i should i'm driven to say something but i personally have never really been driven to like interfere so if i like what would i do if i saw a mass killing (laughs) and i thought like would i really call it in or be like i mean or would i think to consider huh maybe they're all doing shavasana i don't know (laughs) but I I definitely get in a deep meditative state during Shavasana where it's like it's just this bliss ananda you don't even you don't even know where your mind goes it's just like it's just you're there like I can't even it's again another one of those things you can't describe you're just living you're breathing you're not thinking, but then as soon as you think about that, it's gone. Just like that. Personal yoga journey. Let me update you on where I'm at within my journey. So recently, I just got that 200-hour yoga teacher training. I'm sure I've already said it on the show. If I haven't, well, yeah. That's what I did this summer, this past summer, and it was for about a month and I got my 200 hour training certificate which I guess like you don't necessarily need that to become a yoga instructor but gaining the experience and the knowledge and about yoga about anatomy about teaching it just I needed that (laughs) And it was truly a life-changing experience. So that's part of my personal yoga news. And also that I got my first teaching job at LA Fitness. So I'll be teaching yoga classes twice a week there. And I'm so happy that I can just start building the experience now I truly feel that I am on the correct path. I never ever in my life up until now have seen myself leading and this is pretty big deal for me because I'm going to be assuming the position of a leader and I've I don't know if I've ever been that or have ever wanted to be that and you know how I know that I'm passionate about it and that this is what I'm supposed to be doing is because there's certain struggles and habits that I have when it comes to time management. (laughs) And that's something been ongoing for a good portion of my life. And I was scared to do the training because It was Monday through Friday, nine to five for 
you know, almost a month. And I'm like, you know, do I have the skills to keep showing up and to be on point and to um, to just be present? And I showed up <laughs> and I stuck it out and I've never seen myself constantly show up like that for anything else in my life everything else it's a struggle at times and it's really hard to because I was so excited about it it just made it so much easier that's the yoga updates I'm gonna have an update for you every week the wellness challenge for the week I'm doing these wellness challenges for me and then you can do them if you choose I'll come back and report to you all and then like you can get at me on Instagram and report to me at consistently Kaya tell me how your wellness challenge goes send me a photo tag me in a photo of you doing the challenge and the challenge this week starting Saturday Saturday to Saturday I will be meditating five minutes a day (laughs) sitting on my sit bones on the ground in a cross-legged position so sukhasana close my eyes or I might keep them open with just a very light gaze and I'm going to meditate sit in complete silence let my thoughts pass and just focus on my breathing And that is what I'm going to do for five minutes every day for seven days. That is the wellness challenge. When I was in my yoga teacher training, we we meditated every day for 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, I'll keep it up after the training. I kept it up for like a week or so. I don't know how long I kept it up, but, you know, I got away from it. That was a good time period in life. I was thriving and I really felt like I gained so much control over myself being in that meditative state and learning how to sit still and be bored and being with myself and with my thoughts. And I really felt like that helped me focus in other areas of my life. And I want to get back to that again. So, you know, if you guys want to do it with me, that would be cute. We could like all meditate together. Honestly, though, it's weird to take like meditating pictures, but maybe I'll just record myself meditating for like five minutes and then like just screenshot it. But I don't know. That feels weird. So maybe I'll just take a selfie after I'm done and be like, hey, just meditated today. Tune in to Perfect Prana on 88.1 FM and I'll post it. And then like you guys could do the same if you're listening. And then we can all be happy in, in a meditated state together. That's what I'm talking about. That would be a vibe. Just five minutes. That's it. That's all. You know, nothing too serious. Could do more. This will conclude my show for this week. Thank you so much for listening, for tuning in, for vibing with me. I'm so excited for the rest of the semester with you all. Um, I'll be on here every Saturday, every Sunday. If you don't like yoga then then bad things are going to happen to you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be horrible. No, but seriously, I want everybody to feel what I feel, which is good. I would like to end with a quote, something um, relevant to this episode. This is from Tao Te Ching. I, it was part of my reading for my 200-hour teacher training. This book was written in the 4th century BC or BCE by a Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu. I hope I'm pronouncing all of this right. But 
page 64 of this book. The journey of a thousand miles starts from beneath your feet. I'm on a journey right now. I am on a journey at Columbia. I'm on a journey with yoga. I'm even on a journey with this show. And everything is new. And it's just starting. But, you know, I'm taking the steps. It's exciting and nerve-wracking and it's so many things (laughs) a fulfilling fun interesting journey for the rest of my life with that being said the light and darkness within me bows to the light and darkness within you namaste